believe the world is within reach from this location. I believe Revival Baptist Church with just the few that are here this morning and a great crowd, thank God, but it's small compared to the job that we have before us. But I believe it is within our reach if we will do what God has asked us to do. Because God has given us the command, that, that gospel command. But number two, the reason I believe the world is within our reach is because of the gathering cultures. Just in Central Florida, where our church is at, just within Central Florida, we have over 8.2 million people. And if you could, uh, to help you understand, is like if you put a pinpoint where our church is located, right here in Four Corners, and you drive out an hour to either direction, up to the coast, and you know, just that whole square, we're reaching about 8.2 million people, which is pretty awesome. Now, out of the 8.2 million people, uh, you know, we're, we got people from all over the world who are coming here, who live here. You know, this is like a melting pot, you could say. We are in a melting pot of the melting pot of the United States of America. Now, and I, I have some statistics I don't normally do, but I want to read some of these things. Some of these are older, some of these are new, but they all, are, and, and some of the older ones will even be more so true as, as Orlando is growing, it has grown. From 2020 to 2021, we were getting about Two th uh, about a thousand people per day moving to Florida, which is you know pretty intense. You know you're just thinking this every day, just people are just flooding to Florida, and on top of that, we get in Florida 75 million people to visit Orlando specifically, and you know that's way more than New York. We're like the top place for people to visit. In 2018, the city, not the state, the city alone had drew more than 75 million visitors. These visitors from China, these visitors from England, these visitors from, from the Philippines, these visitors from all over the United States, all over the world, they're coming to Orlando. Isn't it interesting that lo and behold, God put a soul winning church in the heart of the melting pot of the melting pot. What would we do if God has raised up such an army and we sit here and don't preach the gospel? It's within our reach. I mean, we don't have to go to China to reach the Chinese. They're in Orlando. And some of them are visiting for a week only to go back to China with the gospel message. We have how many soul owners? I mean, we could have a show of hands soul owners out there they run into people from England they run into the Britons they run into the Chinese they run into all different people and they're here at an Airbnb I mean most of the houses around us are Airbnb you're like well what's the point about Airbnb well the Airbnbs majority of them are in neighborhoods that are close to our church and you know you could literally go to a neighborhood you could knock on their door and you're reaching somebody you know from Brazil and then a week after, two weeks after, you meet someone from England, from Australia, from, you know, Ukraine. You know, you could literally meet people from all over the world simply from one neighborhood. So I got the privilege to go out soul winning with uh, another brother from our church, Brother Eric DuPaul. And it was kind of just a typical day. He knocked doors. People may or may not answer. Just your typical day. And the last door that we knocked, it was a young lady and she was from England and super sweet spirit, very nice lady. And I went through the whole entire gospel with her. She's super receptive. And when it came down to the end to pray with her, she just started crying. And she was just, she was so moved. And I, and I was just like, are you okay? You know, let's, you wanna pray? And she's like, yeah, I wanna pray, but I wasn't even supposed to be here. I was not supposed to make this trip, but for whatever reason, I ended up on this trip coming here and I'm leaving today. So what are the chances of this happening? And basically I was just reassuring her, look, God set this up. This is not an accident. And she was able to get saved. And it was such an amazing, moving experience for, for me and for Brother DuPaul. I mean, just to see God orchestrate all that. We're walking down the street that any other, just like any other street around here, but there was an appointment there that God had set up. Now imagine you got 2,000 Airbnbs in the area, and it also gets rented out 9,000 times per month. So you got the 75 million people coming here. Imagine how many people from all around the world you can reach. Another pretty cool one that's very similar to that, I knocked a door, and these two young men answered the door, I'd say late teens, early 20s, 
and there was a party of some sort going on in the background, not like a bad party, maybe a birthday party or an anniversary or something. And they said they didn't have much time to talk. And, but they, they had an accent. I wasn't sure what their accent was. And so I asked if I could give them the gospel and they were, they were very willing to hear the gospel. But one of the people inside said, come on, come on, you only got a little time. We're celebrating and make a long story short, both of these guys were like, look, we want to hear this. And they both ended up getting saved. And at the end, I was like, just out of curiosity, I don't recognize your, your accent. Where are you from? And they said, we're from Denmark. And I was like, wow, I've never met anybody from Denmark. And now I knew two saved people that are from Denmark. And I told them, you know, go back to Denmark and share this truth with all your friends because this is the most important thing. And they were just super happy and thanked me so much for, for, for doing that. You know, I know when I got saved, you know, and someone shared the gospel with me, I don't think they had it in their mind that, you know, I was going to go out and, and, and win people to the Lord. I was going to get my wife and we're going to, you know, try to conquer and reach as many people as we can to the Lord. I don't think they had that person that thought in mind. But, you know, it, it, you know, praise God, you know, that's what ended up happening. You know, we got saved. I reached out to family members to see if, and got them saved. She reached out to different family members. We reached out to people from Puerto Rico and to Mexico and got other people saved. And, you know, it, and a few of them actually started kind of processing that chain. But also here in Florida, we reached many people from, you know, Brazilians and, and uh, from many parts of the world, which has been pretty awesome. I always think it's interesting when we're out soul winning and we knock a door and someone from a European country where they certainly don't have churches. Churches are, they're starving for churches in Europe. What's the chances this European family with no Baptist church for miles and then when you do get one, it may not even be a soul winning Baptist church and then if you do get one, it may not even be the right gospel message. Here they come to our backyard and the week they're staying at the Airbnb, two soul winners who are prayed up, studied up, ready to preach the gospel, knock on their door. There's no coincidences, my friend. I believe the world is within our reach because of the gospel command. He would not give us a job that was impossible to do. But then number two, because of the gathering cultures of the city in which God has raised us up. Imagine if every church decided we're not just reaching our community, we're going to reach the world. What could God do with an army of soul winners? I believe the world was within our reach because of the gospel command. I believe the world is within our reach because of the gathering cultures. Thirdly, I believe the world is within our reach because of a global connection. Anybody ever heard of that de six degrees of separation? Where, let me just read kind of this thought. This is a Wikipedia statement. Six degrees of separation is the idea that all people on average are six or fewer social connections away from each other. As a result, a chain of friend of a friend statements can be made to connect any two people in a maximum of six steps. It can also be known as the six handshake rule. So I could gather just random six people and the chances are they have a friend of a friend who's a friend of mine. Any six people, just ran, I mean, I'm not, obviously here we would have a lot of connections. I'm talking about anybody in the world, anybody, just go out, find six people and start figuring out who their friends are and there's a chance that there's a friend of a friend who's a friend of your friend. You're like, wow, so you know what that means? If I reached my friend and that friend reached his friend, six times the world's reached. Isn't that crazy how, how the global connection, we're so connected that we literally could reach the world. Even if you didn't live in Orlando, there's that six degree separation. You would be able to reach the world by just witnessing to all your friends who would then witness to their friends. And there we go. I think about it in a, from a mathematical standpoint. I've got math in my background and I think of just the exponential growth of when one person reaches another person, then both of those two people, they can each reach another person and then all of those four people that each reach it. So it's, it will explode if everyone will obey and just go and preach the gospel. And there's no, no way that we couldn't reach, you know, the whole, the whole world in our generation. What I want to show you this, this morning is that the job that we have been given has already been done. So when you're witnessing to people and you're telling them about Jesus Christ, remember that they are real people and that one day they can, they can serve Christ just like you are right now. 
So let's not rush through the plan of salvation. Let's not hurry through it. Let's be very diligent. But you know, every generation, we need to reach the world again. And then we need to reach the world again. And I want to show you, if we can see from the Bible, that if they could do it back in the Bible days without internet, without airplanes, without cars, without highways, without trains, what's our excuse? We don't have an excuse. There's no excuse. All kinds of people were saying that the disciples were turning the world upside down. And that was just back then. But now we have airplanes, cars, all types of uh, quick transportation where we can go place to place really quickly. Back then they didn't have that. And so for them to be able to walk on two feet and turn the world upside down, us being able to fly, we should be able to turn the world upside down. Acts chapter 17, look at verse number five. But the Jews which believed not moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort, and gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. When they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren into the rulers of the city saying, these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. Now this was, I would take that as a compliment, but it was meant to be in a bad way, a derogatory way. But they grabbed these soul winners and they say, these are the guys that have turned the world upside down. Now they're in our neighborhood. Wouldn't that be a great reputation? They turned the world upside down with no internet, TV, radio, trains, cars, planes. Person to person, faith to faith. Everyone doing their job, they, re they turned the world upside down.